In this video, we're going to be checking out Elemental 3.60 Beta 2 release. Now, quick caveat before we take a look at what's included in this new release. Do not use this on a live site. Do not update your site to a beta version. Test this out on your own dedicated server if you want to. Have a little bit of fun with it, but please don't use it on a production site. With the caveat out of the way, let's take a quick look. So first of all, this is where we are right now. Now, the difference between beta and developer's edition is that the developer's edition is kind of pre-beta. These are if you want to try things out before they even go to the experimental beta stage, that's where you use the developer's edition. So this has moved over now, so it's one step closer to being released as a final version. So that's important for anybody that's asking about the container feature, which is something we'll take a quick look at in a moment. Moving over to beta, out of developer's edition, means that we are one step closer to that being released, which is cool. Okay, so the most important feature for probably a lot of people that are actually using Elemental is the inclusion of the container element. And if you don't know what this is, it's basically the flex box and it's going to replace things like the current way of working with uh, sort of intersections, those kinds of things, which is not necessarily the best way of working. So we're going to move over to the Flexbox model, takes a little bit of understanding. It's very different to what you're probably used to, but you can still use the old way of using the different intersections and so on. It's not recommended, but you can do. And as part of this beta release and the final release, there's going to be a converter, which will allow you to convert various instances of parts of your design as well as entire pages. So that's going to speed things up. Take a look at these in previous videos, which I will link in the description below, and we'll take a quick look at some of the features inside you today. Okay, so that's two of the things that are going to be included. There's also some sort of more minor features that have been included in this update. For example, there's some additional features for importing and exporting, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And also there's an onboarding wizard when you first use Elemental, which is nice to see for people that are not particularly used to this kind of way of working. So that might be useful. And there's also the ability to now go ahead and rearrange your global colors and fonts. You know, one of those things that it's probably more of an OCD kind of thing than a really important thing. But again, nice to see that we have a little bit more flexibility inside things. And obviously the final thing, which is included in pretty much every beta release and then final release, are performance improvements to speed up actually using and also the output of Elemental and Elemental Pro. Always good to see that. All improvements are good. So your mileage may vary as always. So first of all, let's take a look at the Flexbox side of things. So let's just go ahead. I've opened up a blank page. And as you can see now, where we'd normally have to insert a section, we now have the container element. So if we just drag this into our design, you'll see we get what looks like the same kind of tool. We've got a single row column section, you can see, but it's now using the container model, which is a flex box. Gives us more control, more infinite control over how things are laid out. It's more streamlined. It's a better way of working. If you've used bricks or oxygen, this is going to be very familiar with you. If you haven't, this is probably going to feel quite strange for a little bit of time. And if you'd like me to create a tutorial on how to use the container element, how to get started, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create something specific to using this to start creating your designs and how it's different from the way that you've previously been working with Elemental and Elemental Pro. But we'll do a quick overview today. So this is our new section. If we take a look over on the right hand side of the navigator, you can see we've got our container and our container is currently empty. So what we can do is we can actually place containers inside containers to create our design. So let's go ahead and add a couple of containers inside you. We'll drop one inside there and you can see now we've got a container inside a container. We can do the same thing again. So we can just select that first container, come back over to our widgets, drop another container inside there. And we've now got two different containers. We can reposition those to make sure that they stack exactly as we want. So you can see now what we've got is two containers sitting inside a container. So if you've come over from working with divs, you know, prior to using a page builder, you're going to feel kind of familiar with this. It's a very familiar model. You're basically putting these containers inside containers, and now we can position how these containers work and how they interact with each other. So let me show you what I mean. Let's select this very first container. And now if we come over to the items section on the left hand side, you can see this now shows us the direction, the align items and the justify content. And these will change based upon the context. So at the moment you can see we've got direction. So we can set things up to be a row, to be a column, to be a reversed row and to be a reversed column. So you can see by default, it's set up that every time we add a container, it's simply going to be a column. 
What this basically means is every time you add a container inside that initial container, they'll stack on top of each other. But if you set this to be a row, they stack side by side. So you can see the difference between a row and a column is how they things stack. You also notice that if we set this to be a column, if you take a look at the align items and the justify content, they will change accordingly. So if we change this to a row, you can see we can do a flex start, center, flex end, flex stretch, and also the justify content, how you want to position these. And I've covered this in a lot more detail in this own video when this was first released. But like I say, if you want a more detailed tutorial on how to get started using this, let me know in that comment section. Okay, so then we can go ahead and we can do things like we're going to do the columns, we can do the reversed rows, we can set the, the sort of alignment of these kinds of things, the content that's inside there, all those kinds of things. And also how you want to justify the content, the gaps between the different elements, you can see you can position that, and how we want to handle the wrap and so on. So I don't want to go into too much detail, I just want to quickly show you this is now included in that beta version. So now the other thing that's been moved over into beta is the ability to convert our designs. Now this is going to change things over from the original way of working with our columns and so on into the new container way that Elementor works. And you'll notice if we take a look, I've already pulled in a design. This is just one of the ordinary blocks that you have as part of the library of blocks in Elementor. So this is still using the original way of working with columns and working with intersections and those kinds of things. You'll notice that all the options are still available on the left-hand side our layout options are there, our structure options are there. But you'll notice at the top, we get a new button that says convert to container. What this does is this allows us to convert in this instance, the block over from the original way of working to the new Flexbox model using the convert option. And we can do this on a block based or we can do the entire page. For this example, I'll show you how we can do it with just the block. So once we click on convert, you can see what happens now is if we take a look at the navigator on the right hand side, everything has been moved over to containers. You can see based upon what I've just shown you, these are kind of sitting inside each other. So this is how the structure is all laid out. And now our options on the left hand side, if we select any of these containers, for example, is you'll see that now we get the container options and the item options. And this is where, again, we can control how things are laid out, how they're set up, their rows, columns, those kinds of things. And based upon my testing of this very, very briefly, this does seem to have been improved from the original version, which I tested in its own dedicated video. Again, link in the description to that. So it's good to see that we've got the conversion option and that's getting better with existing design. So hopefully if you decide to move over from the original layouts to the new container, this should help speed things up. You may have to do a little bit of remedial work just to make sure everything is working the way you want and all your layouts are perfectly fine in all the different kinds of browsers check those out, obviously. But it's good to see those options are now working a little bit better. So next up is the somewhat less exciting ability to go ahead and change the order of our colors and our typography or our fonts. So let's go into our site settings. Inside there, let's open up our global colors. And as you can see, I've got my system colors and I've got a couple of custom colors. When you come over any of the values, you'll see now we change over to two options. We can move to reorder things, or we can just delete that particular color. Now you can't delete the system colors, but you can delete any of the custom colors that you create. And now if I want to reposition these, if I want to drag the red down to the bottom, you can see I can drag that down. And this is nothing more than more of a case of organizing your color palettes to make them a little bit nicer for you. If you have a set of design OCD, you have to have everything laid out in a specific way. Now you can do that inside you. And the same kind of goes for your primaries and your secondaries and so on. You can move those around. Although I'm not really sure why you would want to move those around too much, but you can do. The same thing goes for your global fonts. If you come into global fonts, you can see we've got the same kind of options in here. We can't trash the global system fonts, but we can trash any of the custom fonts. And we can also go ahead and just reorder these as we want to. So useful, but nothing that's that important. Okay, let's take a look now at some of the new features that have been introduced into the import and export kits. This is going to hopefully help us create kits that we can share between different sites using different plugins and so on. So first thing you need to do is make sure you go to the settings, into the experiments, and we're going to come down and make sure that the option for the import export is set to enable. So you can see import export template kit. We can make sure that's active. By default, it looks like it is active, but just making sure that it is. Save your changes, and we should then have that feature available to us. Next up, we need to go over to the Elemental menu into Tools. And inside there, we've now got Import Export Kit. 
If we open that up, you can see now we can go ahead and we can start to export. Now this will allow us to export based upon plugins and things, as long as they're free plugins. So things like WooCommerce and things like that are included. So if you want to learn more, I would recommend clicking on the learn more option to go over and take a look at the documentation associated with this particular feature. But for now, let's just go ahead and give it a try. Let's say export a template kit. So we'll click on start export. Now we can go ahead and we can choose what it is we want to export. So you can see we can export templates, content, site settings, and we can apply some kit information. So we can give this a name. So we'll just call this WP Tuts Kit. Pop a little description inside there. And you can see we can come in and choose any of the custom post types. If we create custom post types, we can also associate that. Now you can see products is set inside here because I've got WooCommerce installed. But if you create your own custom post types or you've got plugins that use custom post types, then you can go ahead and select those if you want to. So once you're happy and you've chosen exactly what you want to grab, you know, the colors, the fonts, those kinds of things, what we can do then is we can click on next. You can see then we can go and say, select the plugins that are required for this kit to work. So we've got a choice between Elementor, Elementor Pro. In this example, we'll say WooCommerce. And if we wanted to use Elementor Beta, the developer's edition, we could choose that as well. And you can see it gives us information about the version number and so on. So we can click on Create Kit. And there we go, we've now created our kit. So this tells us this is what's happened, what's included, the site areas, and we've got a kit that's downloaded as a zip file. So now when we go ahead and import this, so let's just close this down. Let's go back to Elementor and back into our tools, back into Import Export, and we're gonna import a template kit. So let's start that import. We can select our file, so we'll just drag that into there. We'll let that go ahead and upload. You can see now this asks us, what plugins do you want to import? So if you're obviously moving this over to a new site, you can choose which of those plugins are not currently installed. For example, WooCommerce. Once that's done, you can see it'll tell you what version and we can click on next. And this is kind of like the same thing as the export and we're obviously in reverse. So now it just asks us, what do we want to import? So we might want to put all the uh, information in except for the content where well, we could go ahead and set that up as well. Then we can click on import and you can see this now asks us what do you want to keep and apply and then we can go ahead and choose what we do and don't want to pull in. So things like your footer, your header, those kinds of things. Click on next one more time. That's now going to complete the whole process. So this is going to be a great way now of creating your own custom starter kits that you may want to roll out to other people, or you may want to create something and start to sell these as a complete kit that people could purchase using a range of free plugins to go with it. Pretty cool to see we've got this option now and nice to see that the kits are being expanded to make them a, a way of us, the actual user, to be able to create kits things and then actually use them in various different ways, whether to sell them, use them in our own process, share with our coworkers, those kinds of things. Pretty cool to see that option included in here. Now that's basically all the things that have been included in this beta version 3.6 version two or release two. Hopefully this has given you some interest. And like I say, if you want me to cover any of these in more detail, let me know in the comment section below and I can take a look at creating dedicated tutorials on those new features before they roll out as final features so you can hit the ground running when they are available and you can start using them. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. I'd love to hear your feedback on this update. Let me know in the comment section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats and until next time, take care.